So if you go to the terrestrial planets, the uh, situation is quite different. So the D of H ratio in the terrestrial planets uh, in water is quite different from what we know from the uh, outer planets. So in, for instance, in Mars, uh, the value in, in the water is uh, um, <clears throat> Uh, known from the from the outer planets, basically we do not know the D over H ratio in water, and uh, on the other hand, on the terrestrial planets, we do not know the D over H ratio in hydrogen, um, at least not in the atmosphere. Uh, and <clears throat> so, uh, what we measure remotely, for instance, the D over H ratio uh, in in the water, but uh, also maybe in mass meteorites and so on. If you speak about mass, we have a, a D over H ratio of about um, in in uh, meteorites of about 300 ppm. Uh, but in the atmosphere is much higher than that, maybe uh, two and a half uh, times higher than that. The reason is uh, escape of the atmosphere. So the Mars atmosphere originally uh, had a much higher density, but uh, with the time the atmosphere eroded, so to speak, that is believed at least one of the theory, uh, meaning that the lighter elements escape via thermal escape, and uh, then the chance that a, a normal hydrogen atom escaped was higher than a deuterium atom. And uh, so uh, in that uh, sense, we got an enrichment of deuterium, which is five times the value we have on Earth. On Earth, the value is about 155 ppm. That is what we measure everywhere in the water, which is called also the so-called Wiesma value for uh, Vienna Standard Mean Ocean Water. And this is some kind of reference we are using for characterizing the overage and other objects. Then if you go to Venus, we have a huge enrichment. Uh, which uh, depends uh, uh, compared uh, it depends on who is measuring that. Uh, there are different uh, methods how to measure that radio astronomical methods or methods from satellites in the in the uh, millimeter wave in the submillimeter wave in the UV in the infrared mainly in the infrared we get uh, values which are enriched by a factor of uh, 150 to 250 compared to Earth, so extremely uh, high values. Of course, this is processed and that doesn't tell us so much about the formation of the solar system. Different, of course, is the situation if we investigate material which is primordial. And primordial material is believed uh, to be still present in comets, since comets come from the outer solar system where uh, very, very little processing took place over the year. And so this uh, material is called pristine. And uh, to, so therefore, it's very interesting to investigate the D over H ratio in comets. And the first time this happened, in, uh, I think, 1986, during the Giotto mission, so the first European, I think, cornerstone mission of the European Space Agency, uh, flying to Halley's Comet. And uh, uh, with in situ uh, measurement, the D of H ratio was determined to be two times the D of H ratio on Earth, before people believed that comets may have brought water to Earth and that uh, most of the volatiles we have on Earth stem from comets. But this result showed basically the opposite, uh, or not, we cannot say the opposite, but showed that it cannot be true because D of A just didn't fit. So this kind of fingerprint pointed into the different direction. And so since then people tried to measure the D over H ratio in as many comets as possible. And indeed, uh, by ground-based observation, by telescopic, or telescopic observation, it was possible to measure D over H in at least uh, five different comets. For instance, the comet uh, Hyakutake, the comet uh, um, uh, Hale-Bopp, and a few other comets which were very bright. But the problem is to measure D over H from ground, from the Earth. You need a very bright comet with a high production rate of water vapor. So we speak uh, about, let's say, something uh, about uh, at least 10 to the 28 molecules per second, so about 300 kilogram of water vapor production per second. Maybe more, hey, Bob had uh, basically even a factor of 1,000 more. And if that is the case, that the comet is extremely bright and we have extremely lots of water production, we have also the chance to measure the weak isotope, like uh, HDO. So uh, that was done by a couple of comets, but it was never possible to measure that in a Jupiter family comet. The reason is that they have relatively short orbits. The Jupiter family comets are short period comets, maybe with orbital period between 5 and 20 years. I think Hale-Bopp had a couple of thousand years, or Halley has about 80 years. So if comets have short period orbits, it means they are exposed to the Sun in general. Uh, many, many times uh, in relatively short time scales. That means they come near to the sun and then they lose lots of their volatiles. And therefore, with the time, they are less bright. In general, they are much smaller than uh, comets from the uh, Oort cloud, uh, so Oort cloud comets, which is far out and maybe up to 10,000 astronomical units, while uh, Oort cloud comets, maybe, uh, uh, while Jupiter family comets, they go out only, uh, yeah, as the name says, not uh, somewhere between the orbit of Jupiter and Saturn.
And so since that is the case, uh, the problem is to, to measure the D over H in the Jupiter family comet. And we uh, took the advantage of a space telescope called Herschel, Herschel Space Observatory, which had a high resolution instrument called heterodyne instrument for the far infrared. And this instrument is uh, extremely sensitive spe specifically to water. I mean, the cometary spectra of water are extremely narrow. And if you want to detect them, you need extremely high spectral resolution. And uh, HiFi had a spectral, spectral resolution of about 10 millions. And so at the same time, it had detectors working at the quantum limit, at the physical limit. And then in space, so without the disturbing atmosphere in between, we were able to measure for the first time the D over H ratio in a Jupiter family comet. And that was planned from the beginning. So we uh, were involved in this uh, Herschel mission since uh, early 90s. We were involved in building instruments and so on. It was launched in the year 2009. And then in 2010, we uh, performed this observation of a Jupiter family comet called 103P Hartley 2. And by, maybe some people know Hartley 2 also from the epoxy mission. There was an American spacecraft which uh, made some nice photos and did a lot of investigations. Also in 2010, when it was near perihelium. And at this time, we did our uh, observation of HDO together with H260 and H280. Uh, why H260 and H280? Because H260 is an optically thick line, and if you want to uh, determine a ratio, you have to make sure that you see the same volume, the same amount of molecules, so to speak, and that, that requires that the lines are optically thin. Therefore, we measured uh, H280 to HDO, and at the same time related it to H260. But the main measurement was H280 to H2, uh, H, uh, HDO. And from this observation, we learned that the D over H ratio in this specific Jupiter family comet was telluric. That means the same then on Earth. So uh, we showed that uh, this uh, um, um, conclusion that comets could not have br brought water to Earth is not true, because at least we have found one who has exactly the same D over H ratio than what we find on Earth. Anyway, it's a very difficult measurement, and with Herschel we, we were able to measure one more comet. And this comet, the, um, the HDO was very weak, so we even didn't detect it. We got an upper limit, which was not much uh, above uh, the D over H ratio measured in this comet Hartley 2. And of course, for the future, it would be very important, it's very interesting to measure D over H in a large, as large as possible sample of comets. And um, one more, one more uh, observation will be performed quite soon with the Rosetta mission uh, in situ determination of D over H. And then we have to look into the future, what is possible. Uh, one possibility maybe is the Atacama Large Millimeter Array. There may be some observations possible, or another submillimeter telescope like CCAT uh, in the, both in the Atacama Desert. Then there's a Russian experiment called Millimetron, which is extremely sensitive, and with that it should be easy to measure a large number of uh, Jupiter family uh, comets and determine the D over H ratio. So uh, maybe there are some future in situ mission to comets, so some uh, uh, missions are discussed but not selected yet. Anyway, it's a very, very difficult measurement and uh, I personally hope that uh, at least the missions which are discussed now will also be realized and give us the opportunity to get a larger sample, uh, not only of uh, the over H ratio in uh, Jupiter family comets, but also in Oort cloud comets because we just have five or six. Of course, the D over H ratio is not the only uh, criterion from which we can see whether um, uh, water was delivered uh, to Earth by comets. There are also other isotopic ratios which will be determined now by the Rosetta mission, like the uh, N15 to N14, uh, so nitrogen 15 to 14. So this has been determined uh, also in the number of comet, but, uh, comets by ground-based observation, but mainly in HCN. Recently also in NH2, but the question is whether that is representative uh, or whether most of the nitrogen, for instance, is in, in, fo in form of N2. Uh, another important um, aspect in this sense is uh, the amount of organics in comets, because usually uh, um, uh, deuterium is enriched even higher in organics than in, uh, in water, and the Rosetta mission will provide all this kind of information. Um, so what is the D over H ratio in the comet, what is maybe the D over H ratio in the organics, uh, uh, what is the amount of, uh, of organics relative to the ices and the silicates. So uh, that means uh, the Rosetta mission will really provide uh, uh, or will be a big step forward to learn more about uh, this, this uh, topic, whether comets brought water to Earth.